So at the root for me, and I can only speak for myself, I'm technically speaking on behalf of a tradition, but that is far too weighty as far as I'm concerned. And I think it's an example of the impoverished state of our community that people like me actually represent the tradition. And I don't say that humbly. I say that knowing what the tradition is, spending a good part of my life in it and reading. When I hear people call ISIS medieval, it really upsets me because I spend a lot of time with medieval scholars and I know for a fact that they would have nothing to do with these people. And in fact, if those people would actually read these people, they certainly would not be doing what they are doing. And I think, unfortunately, the, the medieval period gets a bad rap. I think people would really uh, be stunned uh, at what they find. And just to give you one example, I'm going to read from one of the greatest uh, representatives of our tradition. And this is Abu Hamad al-Ghazali, who writes about why people disbelieve. And he says, and this is, he died in 1111, so this is a thousand years ago. Firstly, there are some who, failing to find God by observation, conclude that there is no God, and that this world of wonders made itself, or existed from everlasting. They are like a man who, seeing a beautifully written letter, should suppose that it had written itself with a writer, without a writer, or had always existed. People in this state of mind are so far gone in error that it is of little use to argue with them. Such are, are found amongst the physicists and astronomers in particular. Right? So a thousand years ago, you had the same debates and arguments. These are not new debates. In fact, people forget that Karl Marx uh, did his dissertation on Greek materialists, the people that Socrates was going around destroying their arguments. So it's not like they haven't always been here. They ha they've always been here, and they will always be here. And they're part of, of, from our perspective, as a believer, they're part of God's creation. And one of the wonderful things that Hafiz, the great Persian poet, said, if you saw that the world were all guests of God, and you understood that this was a banquet that he invited them to, how would you treat those guests, even the rude ones? Ghazali says that the world is like a banquet and, and, and God has put out these silver and gold plates and perfume, but it's a banquet where you come and then you have to leave and another group comes and then they leave and another group comes. He said, he said what you should do is go in, eat the meal, smell the perfume, and be deeply grateful for the banquet and show that gratitude. And then he said, and then leave. He said what some people do is they start taking the silver and gold plates <laughs> and chucking them away uh, for themselves. And so I think that it's very difficult in these days to represent traditions. There are a lot of things in traditions that people see as odious. Um, they see them as hateful or they see them as discriminatory. And I think a, a lot of tradition is problematic. Um, one of the things that we teach our students at Zaytuna is that tradition is inheriting a lawsuit. And, and you really, you have to recognize that there are ongoing debates and these debates have to be brought out again. There's no double jeopardy in tradition. Right? So we, we have to debate these things. And trying to understand our traditions in the light of the world we're living in is very difficult because it's, it is a confusing world particularly. We've lost a lot of the things that have enabled us in the past to be much more human. One of the things in these verses that I read out, one of the things uh, that I think they indicate is that uh, adversity is, is part of life. And this is certainly in the Quranic narrative. And there's a reason for adversity. We, we learn through adversity. We learn often compassion from our own suffering. We learn to be compassionate with others. Empathy is one of the most important qualities in all of our religious traditions. And to be empathic is very, to be an empath is actually quite difficult in this world. There are people that suffer greatly because they so much 
uh, feel the pain of other people and have very difficult times. And then we also have sociopaths, and they're very real. And these people, it's estimated, I read one book, The Sociopath Next Door, that estimated that about one out of 20 people in the United States is sociopathic. Um, that's, that's quite a large number. That means there are probably a few in the audience tonight, you know. <laughs> Um, and some of them function quite well and learn to at least pretend to be empathic. Uh, 